Welcome everybody to the AI-verse. So in this particular show, I will be talking about artificial intelligence and metaverse. I'm really fascinated by the intersection of these two and the kind of world that it is building. I don't look at the doom and gloom side of things. I'm not really interested in that. What I'm interested in is the potential for a utopia, the potential for a better world. So I'm a very optimistic person and I really want to stay in tune with the developments of the world. So what I'm actually doing is I'm going to be covering those sorts of things in this show. So whether that is monthly or weekly, I'm yet to decide that. At this stage, it will be monthly, but as things develop, I'll just start producing content based on all of that. So as you may or may not know, my primary interests are meditation and mindset. I also like cryptocurrency and finances, and now also obviously artificial intelligence and the metaverse. So with that, let's get into it. Every month or every day, I get these newsletters that updates me on everything that's happening in artificial intelligence. And I'm also subscribed to particular channels. So I thought once a month, I'm just all the cool things that I'm seeing, I'm just going to go into them for about five or 10 minutes just to kind of help build the story in your mind about what's actually happening in artificial intelligence. I don't necessarily read the articles. I just see the, the headings and it's, and it's starting to create this idea of this world that's emerging. So I want to also convey that to you. So that's, what's, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so... Yeah, developments in the past month. So I thought this was really interesting. This is the title is Zoom AI Companion is AI on steroids. So it uses Llama 2, ChatGPT and Claude, which is, I think it was created by Google. That's basically their, their counterpart to ChatGPT to bring you the best assistance there is for free. So as the competition starts to develop between these different companies, we're going to start to get all these access to all these different kinds of tools for free which is really fantastic. But more importantly, which is what this is all about is what kind of tools can we actually utilize to make our lives not only easier, but more efficient and more productive. So anyone who's a helper, for example, it's a very busy life. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things to do. So any shortcuts we can take by using other things is always going to be better. So this, that's what this, this is all about. So uh, this one I thought was also really interesting. AI can already produce better, cities design better cities than humans so this is what studies have shown so already just just in such a short space of time really it's har harnessing the power of ai for design so really people need to start embracing the world as it is i've got friends um as an architect myself i've got friends that i studied with and they're like oh artificial intelligence is bad it's going to steal our job so you can either be in this position of rejecting it and saying well it's bad or you can go this is going to replace me if I don't actually learn how to utilize these tools because that's what it's actually all about. There's a certain quality that humans will, that will never be that you can't ever replace from humans, emotional intelligence for example and just the wisdom, the universe mind. You can't actually replace that artificial intelligence will never be able to replicate that. So we really need to if you want to stay in tune with the world, just catch up and adapt to it, but it's that principle of what it's showing that mathematics and science is actually now getting much smarter than humans. And as this thing just starts to develop more and more, that same principle is going to be starting, is going to start to be applied to everything. So for example, things like doctors. And initially when people thought about artificial intelligence as well, they thought, oh, the kind of jobs that it's going to replace is blue collar jobs, things like factory workers and um, people, people who are doing manual labor, construction, these kinds of jobs, but in actuality, it's it's the reverse. It's white collar jobs that are getting replaced that can be replaced very quickly. So I thought this one was extremely fascinating. So there was a boy that saw 17 doctors over three years for some chronic pain that he had. And then one day, just by chance, his mum decided to ask chat GPT and they actually found the diagnosis through chat GPT. So 17 doctors couldn't figure it out. So how hopeless would that make you feel? You've gone to 17 different doctors and finally ChatGPT gives you the answers. And again, what does this actually mean? So uh, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the net, some of the Netflix documentaries, but you know, human mind is really always looking out for itself. So even if we try to be objective and we try to do best for people, if we have a greedy human mind where we can it can skew our perspective so we can become biased. So really, oh, just take this drug because I'm going to get I'm going to get a kickback for it. This is actually what happens a lot in America. The the pharmaceutical industry is under a lot of scrutiny and so are doctors. So it's really interesting now that you can have something like ChatGPT which can be purely objective. It's going to give you the best information that you need. But not only that, as knowledge starts to develop, 
artificial intelligence is actually creating these connections between all these different fields of study. So it's just going to start to get smarter and smarter. So as more new data gets input into it, people getting diagnosed with new things, it's going to keep learning. If I'm a doctor and I'm in Australia and I've figured this thing out, there's no way for it to travel to Korea, except if somebody from Korea happens to stumble across the study that I've done. But if that gets uploaded immediately to, to some sort of artificial intelligence, then somebody in Korea has instant access to that information. So things are getting faster and faster and faster and more and more intelligent, which is really, really exciting. So it's only going to get more and more accurate. And then this is also another really interesting one. So you can actually make that you can now make an AI clone of yourself or anyone else living or dead with this application called Delphi. So if you think about people really being interested about that, you know, you can really live on your, your, your picture world can really live on if you really want to, because it's just, you know, as we know, it's just a robotic function of the past. So it can really live on the people that you love. So of course, those things as the wisdom starts to improve, people will realize, well, you know, they don't actually need to live on because we do live on when we become one with the universe. But yes, of course, people won't know this for a while. And yeah, better still, can we actually think of anyone who's really special and worthy of being cloned? I mean, I think we can all, we all know of at least three people that really, if they're, if their minds can be replicated in some sort of clone and we can stay connected to them physically or not physically, but even just being able to communicate with them in this kind of material way, then that's also something that can provide a lot of value. AI personal assistants are coming. So this is something that could change everything in our personal and professional lives. And in actuality, it already is. So unfortunately, there's people in Africa I know who can't actually use chat GPT, but things like large language models like chat GPT, BARD and so forth are already acting like personal assistants. So I, for example, if I'm writing a blog, I just get an idea. It's very easy. I just, um, oh, today I need to write a blog. I put that into my mind and ask the universe, okay, show me an idea. A condition comes, there's an idea, bang. Okay, what am I going to write about? Oh, just go to chat GPT, ask chat GPT for some ideas. And then I start writing from there. Any questions that I have, any research that I need to do, it's a personal assistant. I don't need to do anything else but ask chat GPT and Google. It's really really fascinating and like really fast, really amazing. Okay. All right. So that's a bit of an unload of the past month. So hopefully that was at least enjoyable to start to get to understand what, what things are happening. And I'm talking really fast, obviously, because I'm really excited. There's a lot of energy that I get from learning all of this. So I'll, I'll try and slow down and calm down a little bit. But before we actually get started, I want to also just play this one little video. So this is a really, really cool. Um, obviously, for me, artificial intelligence, metaverse, cryptocurrency, they all come together. So this is something uh, the this is something about artificial intelligence. And well, I'm just going to play the video and you'll you'll see for yourself. So I think I shared it with the sound. No, I did not. So give me a second. I'm just going to reshare it. Okay, so just a short little clip, couple of minutes. Initiatives. Another equally intriguing facet of artificial intelligence is rapidly taking shape, the birth of digital humans. Researchers are blending state-of-the-art AI techniques with the creative world of 3D modeling, forging a new frontier where text can transform into lifelike avatars. If you've ever thought it would be fascinating to have a 3D digital representation of yourself, or anyone else for that matter, new projects from the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems are about to bring that possibility closer to reality. They've developed groundbreaking methods that allow for the creation and customization of 3D avatars using advanced AI technologies. A recent research paper showcases a technique for creating digital avatars with layers, such as body, clothing and hair, distinctly separated yet seamlessly integrated. This disentanglement is made possible through varying 3D representations, an explicit mesh-based model for the body, and a neural radiance field, nerve, for clothing and hair. This architecture allows for incredibly detailed and editable avatars, from virtual clothing fittings to easy transfers of outfits and hairstyles between different body shapes. Perhaps even more astonishing is the method where the magic of text converts into virtual beings. Employing stable diffusion 
and the hybrid 3D modeling, a system can generate a realistic avatar face from a mere text description. It then continues to add features like hair and clothing using neural radiance fields. The result is a 3D avatar of striking quality and editability, far surpassing what previous text-to-avatar methods could achieve. All right. So very, very cool, right? And then it really sparked my mind as well. I think I think about my own experiences with playing video games. So artificial intelligence, metaverse, it's all about we're already in we're already in some ways the metaverse. So even talking through Zoom is part of the metaverse. We're in a digital world. You think you're talking to me, but it's actually just a picture on your screen. And what am I? What am I as this being? So we know this is a false existence. This existence is not actually who I am. So this concept of actually being able to upload this, this, this material into this digital format that I can then alter and adjust and create this, this being that I, that I truly want, just like it says, it, like, it, it disconnects this whole idea of what I think that I am. I can be this whole new person in this alternate reality, which then as more and more people go into this alternate reality and connect with it, it's like it totally disconnects you from what you think you are which I think is a very powerful idea moving forward in terms of actually letting go of who I think that I am so that I can find who I actually am as my true self. So that's what got me really excited about that. So as you can see, some really fascinating things have happened over the last month. And I really hope that this provided some value to you. It is something where I'm really careful about the things that I choose. It presents a certain kind of picture that I see evolving in this world. So I really hope it was of interest to you. And I hope you can like and subscribe and even leave some comments. Even what was your most favorite topic that was discussed? I'd really love to hear other people's perspectives because this also helps me to grow. We're really all learning this together. So thank you very much, everybody.